Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is someone watching Desperate Housewives, season one, episode four. Who's that woman? Okay, so one of the things that we forgot to mention last week was that when Bree was at the doc Goldfine. Yeah. When she was at his office, he went to go talk to another patient, and we just assumed she was going to steal Rex's tape. Yeah. And she, excuse me, she was certainly looking to see if Rex's tape was there, yeah. but she found Mary Alice Young had a tape there. And it is it is moments specifically like that that I think make the show better yeah. than just a normal show, because I think a normal show would have just Had gone, her take Rex's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But giving this overall, this overarching mystery is interesting. I and agree. it goes through the entire season. Yeah. So Brie listens to it. She brings it to the women. They listen to it. They find out that Mary Alice was having a dream where there was a woman who, the a woman girl, was underwater? A girl. She said girl. Girl was underwater. Yeah. I had the nightmare again. But this time I was standing in a river and I saw the girl under the water and, and she kept screaming, Angela. So what do you think the significance of the name Angela is? Actually, that's my real name. <laughs> And they are unsold on that because Gabby's like, that doesn't make any sense. I've seen her driver's license. It did not say Angela. And you can't change your name. <laughs> well, you can, but it, it, the implications of that are far more like. Yeah. Daggering. So they do confront Paul with it. He breaks. Well, with the note. They give him the note. Right, they right, don't right. talk about the tape, but they do. So they've had the note for a minute. Yeah. Uh, he breaks down crying. So, Paul, we noticed that you're selling the house. Yes. Uh, too many painful memories. I'm sure you understand. We found a note. You can see from the postmark, Mary Alice probably got it the day she died. Paul, are you going to be okay? No. Like, very intensely. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then later comes back to tell them that Mary Alice yeah. was... Mary Alice was not a well person. She was very troubled. Troubled? And that she used to write... There was a lot of uh, cover-ups in this episode, mm -hmm. some better than others. Yeah. <laughs> but he said she was unstable and used to... At first it was harmless. She would leave herself notes, reminders like, pick up the mill. But over time, the notes became ugly. Hateful messages started showing up. Mary Alice was writing them to me, to Zach, to herself. Really? That's why I lost it. I was reminded of what Zach and I had been through. It was a pretty decent mm -hmm. cover up, although Gabby and Lynette were like. Unsold on yeah. it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think he's lying. <laughs> so do I. And then he seemingly, Paul hired a investigator yeah. to look into the, the note. note. So exactly what is it you hired me to do? Someone sent that note to my wife. And I need to know who. So uh, there was that. Rex, Bree and Rex are still having their issues. Well, he wasn't even in this episode, but now the kids know. Uh huh. And Andrew went on like, how old is he supposed to be? Like 16? He was at a strip club with his friends. They were drinking beer. <laughs> the, the, the implication is that they had a fake ID. I, mean, I really like the way Bree handled it. Keith? Ian? Andrew? Oh, by the way, Heath, I, I didn't get a chance to tell you that was a lovely solo last week at church. Thank you. We're out of here. I hope it wasn't something I said. Because that's the kind of thing that we would have gotten in, like, comical trouble for. Sure. And I like that she, because what Andrew was trying to get out of her, and it becomes far more clear as, because like I said, they dance a tango. Yeah. That goes through the entire series. And mild tonal spoilers i think they end up on good terms okay uh but there's plenty <laughs> in the interim yeah but he's trying he wants a rise out of her mm -hmm. basically he wants to ruin this perfect reality that she is so committed to upholding yeah 
And so in that regard, her not getting hysterical, I, they they handled it really well. I love that she sat down and was like, because that's kind of, that's the tactic that our mom would pull. Well, Andrew? What are you doing? I'm staying for the show. I'm dying to see what all the fuss is about. It's so good. We're, and I, and like, again, <laughs> It's reductive because some people just want to be strippers, and I think that that's totally valid. But she's like, <laughs> I'm curious, Andrew, as you fantasize about this woman, do you ever stop and think how she came to be on this runway? God only knows what she's had to deal with in her life abject poverty, drugs, domestic violence, maybe even molestation. Mom. And there's like another man sitting on the other <laughs> side of Brie that is like, Kid, get her out of here. She's killing it for the rest of us. He's another example of the places where that make like that detail is what makes the show so good. Yeah. Because if it were just Brie and Andrew, it would feel too uh, like too, perfunctory or and glowing. too intimate. I think yeah. the fact that they're that he's there helps. That, well, because yeah. it's causing a scene. Yeah. And so basically, Andrew did not win this round no. and she punished him by taking his door for three months, you're right. That is a very long time. It's a long time, and I also I don't like removing the right to privacy as a punishment for your children. Certainly not. That doesn't suit the crime he committed. C correct, because he didn't violate someone else's privacy, mm -hmm. and so. It's, but and and also, I think it would be a good. It would be a good. Or sign. like he hadn't. He hasn't. He, the the behavior. The punishment of removing privacy. Yeah. Doesn't suit. Yeah running away. Yeah. Like, if he was doing something inappropriate in the house, then sure. Then yeah. Well, even still, it's like, there's a, I think that's a very fundamental right as a child in a house is to have, be able to have your own space and a door that It closes. also, it works out in this moment and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push this to this level, but <laughs> the way Andrew plays, yeah. he fights dirty. Yeah. So if anything, she's sort of setting herself up for failure with sure. that one. <laughs> well, and that, and because that's the other thing too. If Brie were to be doing this correctly what i would have done is after they had that nice moment in his room then i would have decided like i would have still said three months but then given his door back in like a, a week. week yeah that's that's plenty and actually to Bree's eternal credit she handles the situation she did very well yeah. and even explains it to him like she breaks it down and she's like i suppose i do owe you an apology i shouldn't have lied to you about your father you and your sister are old enough to handle the truth, and I'm sorry. I know you blame me for what's happening with your father, but it's not entirely my fault, and I need you to understand that. I do. I just don't want him to leave. She handled it really well. I, I, like, I do also love the boundary she puts down where she's like, I'm really sorry for like this, for not telling you about your dad, and he's like, well, keep going. And she, If you think I'm going to apologize for taking you out of a strip club, you're wrong. I consider it one of my finest moments. <laughs> it's one of my proudest I'm, moments. I'm not going to no, apologize for that. It, it truly, yeah. it was good. It was really good. Uh, <laughs> I'll go to Gabby next. Okay. It's it's a lot of the same. I hated taking baths when I was a kid. Of course, back then, the only thing I had to play with was my rubber ducky. It is good character work on Gabby's perspective. It's interesting Watching her story has been interesting to me now. Yeah. Because I think I took a lot of it at face value when I was 18, where I was like, that's what it's like when you're an adult. You get into <laughs> shenanigans. And I get in so few shenanigans. These are prisms of her own making. <laughs> so few shenanigans. Um, but I do like that she is savvy. I do like, like, that was not a bad cover up. What's this? It's a sock. It's a man's sock. It's not mine. Oh, for God's sakes, Carlos. It's Yao Lin's. She dusts with him. See? Socks instead of rags. <laughs> Yao Lin uses them to dust. But Check mark she, 100. But then she overplays her hand. Yeah. <laughs> with Yao Lin. Have you always cleaned with socks? 
Yes. Was that a Japanese thing? I am Chinese. Because I'm like, you need Yaolin. If we know one thing, the you need co, you are in severe lack of cahoots. Well, the implication <laughs> is that Yaolin probably needs this job too, so she's not sure. gonna, you know. But I, I do think it's funny where Yaolin is like, I don't like lying. Yeah, well, I don't like your ironing, so there. Very funny. It's um, a little mutually assured, kind of. Uh huh. You specifically, if you want to watch along with us, yeah. three dollar tier, Patreon.com. You you use the word reductive twice I in this did. episode. The strip club scene, <laughs> but I, I mean, she she brought it home in a way that like <laughs> left the reductive at the and and so did the so did the Carlos and the cable guy scene as well. But it was like the first thing where it was like just a poster of Gypsy uh, for like the Broadway show of Gypsy on his wall. I was like reductive. Uh, well, and but then, then there was like you know the ju- but they were just like sexy gay photos and stuff. Everywhere. Well, they weren't. Really? I mean, they were just... They were supposed to be. <laughs> they were just men's yeah. torsos, but they weren't even necessarily all that aesthetic. No, and it was it was very, it was very sort of baby's first. Uh, I mean, it's ABC <laughs> level gay erotica. Inclusion, yeah. or yeah. It's, it's still very funny, and I do like... I, I kind of remember it being the case, but I like how despicable both Gabby and Carlos are. Well, because... And that they managed to keep it. Yeah, so Carlos thinks that Gabby then is having an affair with the cable guy because he confronts John about, like, did you see the cable guy? So he goes, somehow finds the home address of the cable guy. You think you can have sex with anyone you want? Carlos couldn't help but feel proud of himself. After all, he just defended his honor. Or had he? Are you gay? Punches him right in the face, starts kicking to the ground, yeah. and is kicking him saying, you think you can sleep with whoever you want? <laughs> true it's pretty good um i just i love ricardo chavera yeah. and <laughs> just his sort of like oh well but and i love that <laughs> in the moment doubling yeah. down was his only option. just like admitting he did a hate crime because the guy is like yes is that why you're doing this uh, yeah He thinks about it and then he's like, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then there's a police sketch of Carlos on the evening news. Police are circulating this sketch of the assailant. I have to say, uh, you know, the circumstances speak for themselves. I've taken a strong stand uh, with my company. Which, like, how many baths does Gabby need? She's, <laughs> she's like, taking baths, like, 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but this time he's in the bath with her, which makes the John baths weirder. <laughs> Is this the same water? I mean, does she have? <laughs> Yuck. Oh, yeah. it was it was very funny. We were also like. Uh, and the time capsuleness of it led to the humor. Yeah. The other thing, too, is like the Gabby situation in this episode and the Susan situation in this episode are kind of the same because in both cases they did do the thing they're being accused of <laughs> but the person who's accusing them has like is unhinged it, they are unhinged and they also only have at best circumstantial suppositions like nothing Martha Huber is just like I found your measuring cup. She is an icon. It, I love is. Martha Hoover she is. so much. She, she's so creepy, <laughs> but she is an icon. I can't wait for you to try this. It's mincemeat. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just thinking of that expression. I'll make mincemeat out of you. Mincemeat used to be an entree made up of mostly chopped meat. So it was like saying, I'll chop you up into little bits. <laughs> but that was centuries ago. Today, there's no meat in it, and still people say, I'll make mincemeat out of you. I don't know that people really say that anymore. I do. So she's like, I found your measuring cup, and Susan is like, Oh, Susan, being coy is a strategy best employed by virgins at their first dance. For women of our age, it's just annoying. 
virgins <laughs> at their first dance. Which and then, and then you women our age, and you were like, <laughs> that R is doing a lot of heavy. <laughs> yeah. um, and so it's like, yes, Susan did drop her measuring cup in Edie's house, but but Martha Huber is assigning malice. Like, she's assigning it as arson. And it was an accident. Well, she says you burnt your rival's house down. And it's just like, no, that's not what, not what, not what happened at all. Also, everyone has that measuring cup. You have no way to prove who it belonged to. There's like, that's so circumstantial. You do not meet the burden of proof. But that, but that, but that's what makes it so funny. Yeah. Is the fact that it is so circumstantial and she is so certain and not for yeah. nothing, she is right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, she is right, obviously. <laughs> But it's like... But also her plan. Yeah. What exactly is it you want from me, Mrs. Hoover? Uh, are these together? Bring it up. To, to just get Susan to start paying some of her bills because Edie's living with her and apparently, like, just putting the water heater through its paces. I, so I guess she's filling the bathtubs for Gabby. I'm not. Sure. I, I was like, "What is Edie doing with this hot water?" And you're like, "Well, washing her car every day." Every day. We do know that. Yeah. That was spoken. You gotta be kidding! She washed her car yesterday. Edie's funny. I remember liking Edie, of course, uh, but also she largely has the reputation for being a villain for being the bitch for being the antagonist or what have you. And as I recall, and I think this will be the case, she's largely the one who I think is right. Mm. Like she's large. She's very upfront about who she is and what she wants. Fair. <laughs> and I think that the Susan thing, yeah. the, 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 and again, as I recall, it happens a lot because they, her and Susan try to be friends yeah. in like season two and three. Okay. And Susan cannot, get out from her own. Oh, okay. It's 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 very interesting. And so I was always a little bit of an ED, like the truth and nothing but the truth. Because sure. even in that scene where she comes from, from work, which again, to your point, Susan is breaking into her house. Edie, I thought you'd be at work. I'm not feeling well. Well, don't just uh, run off. Come, come and hang out with us. It's not bad enough that I have to watch you throw yourself at him every day. And now you want to make sure that I see it up close and personal? No, it's not like that. Um, I've got to take off, but I'll call you about Wednesday night, okay? <sighs> Edie, wait. Mike and I were going to go see the movies on Wednesday, and I just thought it would be fun if you joined us. You want me to come with you? Yeah. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> Julie is breaking into her house. She's a minor. She won't. It won't go on her permanent record. But that's like, if we're racking up like parenthood points sure. <laughs> for Susan, getting your thirteen-year-old yeah. daughter to like, yeah. So Edie comes home and she's just sort of like put out, where she's just like, "You already won. Why are you still rubbing this in my face?" Yeah. And so then Susan, because she's cornered, she ends up setting up a date for Edie and Mike. Yeah. It's very funny. They get the cup back, and it ends with Martha sort of confronting her. Mm -hmm. You took it, didn't you? Good evening, Mrs. Hooper. Obviously, if you're capable of arson, I should have known you'd be capable of breaking and entering. I suppose you destroyed it. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I did. She just doesn't, you, especially now without the cup, which already is such dicey evidence. She doesn't have one lick of evidence. And so, but she's like, well, you've made an enemy of me now. And I'm like, Susan's, I mean, she, Susan will drop more. He will, of course. I mean, hit her over the head with a tree branch and yeah. coins will fall to the ground. I mean, <laughs> but I, I do like that. And I, I, I do like that Susan was very clearly waiting outside for her to show up. Yeah. And the like, Oh, Susan, let's not be unpleasant. We can go back to the same friendly relationship we've always had. I will keep my lawn looking nice, and I will make sure that my music isn't played too loud, and if I get some of your mail, heck, I'll run it right over, because that's what good neighbors do. But from now on, when I run into you on the street, and I say, good morning, Mrs. Hooper, just know that inside, I am quietly 
hating your guts. And then she caps it off with, Good evening, Mrs. Hooper. Lots of, uh, you may have won the battle, but you didn't win the war yeah. this episode as well. Yep. Uh, and then that does bring us to Lynette and the boys. Yeah. I really appreciate, I really appreciate the sentiment. Mm -hmm. I don't think they actually hit all the beats because the boys are terrors. If we know one thing, it's that the boys are terrors. And if you need any proof, they hired Mary Pat Gleason to be like, your kids suck, lady. She the boys are in my class because I'm the only teacher who can handle them. What if we separate the twins? We can try that. But if it doesn't work, we may no longer be able to accommodate them. Oh. I love her. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Uh, <laughs> and just the glee with which she handles Lynette. Yeah. And because I love the second time that Lynette comes. And she's back. just eating sunflower seeds. I got your message. What's going on? The boys refuse to be separated. They're six years old. Make them. The school regulations are pretty strict about me wrestling with the boys. But if you want to give it a shot, be my guest. And I was like, what an unhinged snack Tech choice. choice. Like <laughs> they're not even shelled either. They're like, she's eating them with the shell. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty yeah. is what we're saying. Yeah. And so the conversation is whether or not the boys need to be medicated, mm -hmm. but it's it's very if then. It's like, well, if the boys are rambunctious, then they need to be medicated, and maybe that will hurt creativity is the extent, or their like passion and creativity is the extent of the conversation. And for a modern audience, I think that the it's not so much medicating them as it is if they have an issue yeah. that it needs, needs to be addressed. Medicated. Yeah. Because I was not medicated for a long part of my life. And frankly, we're still, the jury's still out on whether or not it's like the right. The right combo. <laughs> but because th that was one of my mom's concerns because I was very, very expressive and artistic and creative and yeah. stuff. And eventually we got to a place where I am on medication and it was life changing. I wish I had done it sooner. I wish it was talked about more. Oh, yeah. And things like this are the first step so you know bravo show but also mm. yeah come on <laughs> yeah. you, you leave left a little to be desired but i, mean, I bravo the performances uh-huh yeah the performances were authentic and i real and i do like i i like the message i like the notion where because because lynette's sort of like i'm not going to do this just to make your job easier yeah to which the teacher was like oh <laughs> uh i don't remember if they ever Put more of a button on it if the boys are just rowdy and or there is something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. I don't remember because it's it's played for comedy for comedy. And I it, the show could stand to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that's like mostly, was that mostly it? it. Yeah, it was not. a. This one wasn't as jam packed as some of them have been. Oh, I did start to say, well, it, it so we did. We. We tapped Andrew in. He is yeah. like an active player at this point. Uh, and I did say to you, and I was going to elaborate here, that uh, I actually wrote a paper mm. in college about Julie. Yeah. It was in our media and society class, and they had us write a paper based on, it was something about like the depiction of young people in recent, in a piece of media. Mm. And I was like, on this Sunday's Desperate Housewives. I'll do it. And I wrote an entire paper on how Julie is one oh, of my favorite God. fictional characters. 2004, I would have done Dawn from Buffy. Really? Yeah. Well, it was 2006 for me or seven. Still, that was semi-recent. Yeah. That show ended in 2003. Because, and I remember specifically, uh, because Julie was 18, she starts dating. Okay, yeah. You're remembering I, stuff? Yeah. yeah. Uh, She's going to a college party and mm. she, or she asks and Susan's like, will people be drinking? And, and Julie just says, yes, but I'm not going to. I'm not planning on it. And Susan tries to be like, well, you're not going to blah, blah, blah. And Julie's no. like, nice try. Yeah. But I I'm, I'm <laughs> this dynamic is well in yeah. <laughs> well in motion. Uh, and it was like when I started staying over at your house mm -hmm. in the summers during college because my dad was like, come home at 830. And I was like, I'd like to see it's you six o'clock right yeah. now. <laughs> it's like, it takes me 45 minutes to get there. I'd like to see you enforce this. I'm 19. And actually, I think Carlos has been 
pretty deplorable up until this point. And this was still, I'm not trying to yeah. claim any of his behavior in here was not, but I'm saying there was the mischievous mm-hmm. gleam in the, in the eye yeah. where we will get more from Carlos. Yeah, I recall I liking Carlos, like I said, I think I think he has one or two things that are like pretty unforgivable. Yeah. <laughs> But broad strokes, I like Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, uh, we will be back after we watch episode five, in which we will be one quarter of the way through. Almost. Is this one of those 25 episode runs? Well, I think it's 22. <laughs> Most things are 22. 23. So, all right. Bye. Let us know what you think. <laughs>